In this episode, I'm going to show you what you can expect when removing your oil pan and installing an oil pickup tube and windage tray. And I'll also give you a couple of tips that I learned while doing the job. All right, so we have the engine jacked up. I placed a piece of wood in between kind of like where the engine and the transmission meet. And we got that up pretty much as high as we could without damaging anything. I don't know if you can see, but right there, that little bolt right there, that is the engine mount. And we pretty much got it clear of the subframe plus like an extra inch. So pretty much as high as we felt comfortable. We might be able to go a little bit higher, but the idea is again, the higher the better. Now what's that's gonna do is right here is our oil pan. And all the bolts around the oil pan are pretty easy to get to, except the last four that are right behind here. And it's generally is covered by the uh, subframe. So again, by jacking it up, you're basically gonna have enough space to get like a wobbly extension or any combination of to get to the last four 10 millimeter bolts that are in the back. The higher you get it up, the easier it is. Really not that difficult actually after all. But here, let me show you real quick. So nothing too fancy, just a wobbly extension and you are basically able to reach just straight back in between the pan and the subframe and you'll be able to reach all the four bolts pretty easily. All right, so I was hoping I didn't have to do it, but honestly with the engine mounts in and the exhaust in, there's just absolutely no space for you to get any sort of tool in between the oil pan and the block. I've seen a lot of videos where people use like pry bars and stuff, but also at the same time, they say don't do that because you can easily bend the oil pan. And if you do, and you try to put it back, that's a leak, or you can scratch your aluminum block. Yeah, in every single video, I see people do it. But I do not want to take that risk because I don't want to do this again. So I try to use also a putty knife that I've seen people do. But again, there's just no room to even get a putty knife flat in there and let alone try to hammer it in. So. I went and I got this oil pan separator tool and it's basically like a thicker, stronger razor blade with some spots for you to hammer it in. Um, and this is supposed to help separate the oil pan a lot easier than any other tool. And I'm gonna have to agree with them on this, but again, I had to remove the engine mount just so that I can get enough space to get a hammer to get the tool flat up against the block and the oil pan. So yeah, that's gonna have to be something that you're gonna have to do as well. Honestly, if you were to do this, I would start with the uh, driver's side engine mount. That's the easiest one to reach and it's the easiest one to remove and reinstall, especially if you can get your uh, engine high enough. As you can see, I got the tool started and it's starting to wedge itself between the oil pan and the block. So I'm just gonna keep doing this, you know, wherever I can and try to see if I can just get the pan to separate and then pull it off. <laughs> Holy crap, I got the oil pan off finally. That was a major pain. If you're doing it for the first time, whatever the OEM stuff they used to seal the pan, it's it's like glue. But that, uh, that oil pan separator tool came in clutch. I did have to remove the engine mounts to get enough space, but persevere and uh, you'll get in there. A second bit of annoyance is also gonna be this like oil dipstick tube part right here. But what helped for me is a pair of small hose clamps, hose pliers whatever got it on pretty good and then just leverage it off all good so um yeah this pan's pretty dirty so i'm gonna clean the crap out of this all the ceiling surfaces inside make sure there's no gunk in there clean the outside as well because there's just a bunch of sludge there is an o-ring right here i bought a new one so we are going to replace that uh, that o-ring right there and yeah so just cleaning here and then cleaning on the block IAG windage tray installed, pretty straightforward. Uh, I reused the uh, two front bolts that are OEM and then they provide you with two bolts for the rear.
All right, so we got our oil pan here. Cleaned it as best as I could. I mean, I hit it with everything. Plastic razor blade, razor blade, brake cleaner, simple green, scotch pad, like everything to get as much of that old silicone sealant out as I could. And I think I did a pretty good job. I also replaced the O-ring here. The one that was uh, on the pan originally, it actually came off in pieces, so. And yeah, we are, we are ready to go put some RTV black. I know a lot of people like to put a shit ton of RTV and honestly, I don't, I actually think that's more detrimental than it is helpful. That's job well done. My tips for doing this job are loosen the pitch mount, the engine mounts, and lift the engine for clearance. Remove the headers as well. If the oil pan has never been touched, then removing it is going to be a major pain because the OEM RTV is like cement. But removing the engine mounts and using the oil pan tool helps. Clean the oil surfaces of the pan and block until there's no RTV left. Very important. Overall, the job isn't that bad. Have fun. Good luck. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>